What up my freaks, Ruana Sensite here with part 9 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded King Luan campaign. So as we saw last time, Massive Orkel had a massive fight for us as well. Grom the Paunch was not there, but two of his stacks were. They stood against Luan, but ultimately were cast down and the faction destroyed. This means Bretonia, at least uh, our interior territories, are more or less safe at this point, and only the dead of the Barrow Legion remain. Now, of course, we do have the Skaven and the um, Beastmen to the south, but we'll deal Deal with them later. More importantly than all that, perhaps, we were able to confederate Rapon Stilianess and now have Phyrus and Al Haik added to our uh, uh, our territories. But that's not all. Something I didn't realize at the end of last episode was the fact that we can see Thegan's errantry actually means we can confederate them as well. So there's more confederation to do. Uh, I forgot to do this with Rapunz, but what we can do with Thegan's errantry is this. Non-aggression pact, trade agreement, military access, then give us your money, 5.5k. And we're still at 74, then we'll go defensive alliance and give us your money, 15, 1508, nice. Then military alliance, give us... Oh, you have no money left, alright, well... <laughs> That's about all the money, and then we'll simply confederate you, uh, like so. And beautiful. And beautiful indeed, and that is... Oh, we get the bonus for this as well. What do we have here? Uh, we have hero action cost reduction. We have wound recovery time. Ew, terrible. Income from post-battle loot. That's not horrible, but 5% is fairly little. And experience gain for units. If this was for lords and heroes, this would be what I would take. But 5% for units, eh, not a big deal. I think in the early game, we're better off getting the post-battle loot because we needed to kickstart our economy, or at least more so. Also, let's give this a quick read. Uh, Baron Thegan Zarentry has fought for years to avenge the sacking of Astalia, and having liberated the final slaves from their Arabian masters, prepares to set sail for Fair Bretonia. Well, I don't think they're going to be sailing anytime soon. Uh, let's go for post-battle loot, yes. All right, and tribute, not tribute, province secured, confederation, vegan zarantry. And I see we're under siege by the Greybeard's prospectors. Well, you know what? I can't complain this about this too much because as everybody knows, the Greybeard's prospectors are by far the worst faction in the game. Everybody I know dislikes them and they deserve to be destroyed. And they deserve to be destroyed, rather. And I wouldn't turn my nose up at the chance to do so. Do we have a garrison? Uh, we do have a garrison. Oh, we should be fine. Can we auto-resolve? You know what? I'm not even gonna... Oh, we can't auto-resolve this. Okay. Uh, you know what? I'm disinclined to wait. I am disinclined to wait. We're going to attack the Greybeard's Prospectors immediately. Here we go. Alrighty, go figure, the first time we get to use the Trebs in this campaign is going to be with a, a random little uh, a random little settlement to garrison, but hey, uh, can't complain, plus it gives us the chance to send the filthy Greybeard's prospectors and back to the hovels and they crawled out of. And we're going to start off by annoying the enemy artillery with our Treb, not going to be an artillery shootout as the flame cannons was while very deadly, of uh, what half the range perhaps of the uh, of the Trebs, 250 versus honestly 450, yeah, yeah, nearly half the range. So we're just going to get them the heck off the field. Now the enemy does have a decent amount of relatively elite units, and we have nothing but peasants and well three knights. And dwarfs are very vulnerable to mobile units, so the knights should come in very handy here, but we will have to watch out for the slayers. The gyro bomber is very deadly, and SFO in particular. 
And there is a couple of other units to be wary of. The hammerers are going to be so difficult to bring down as we, I think, completely rack, lack armor piercing in our entire army other than the foot squires. And then there's also the iron drakes of troll hammer torpedo. So their army is much more elite than ours. Uh, let's see if it pays off for them. Anyway, uh, the firing of the trebuchets continue, though it's taking them a long, a long time to even slightly damage uh, the those flame cannons. Bretonia isn't known for its artillery after all, but that's okay. That's why we have the. Uh, uh, that's why we have imperial allies, even though Bretonians think it is unchivalrous to use black powder weapons. Which I do find a little bit odd in some ways, because is it really that different from using a bow? I guess you need training to use a bow, but you're. You're using peasants who are just. Probably also not particularly trained. I mean, the peasant bowmen are likely a militia, and those are just firing in the general direction of the enemy with low accuracy. Okay, fine, poor accuracy. Whatever. So, yeah, not so sure about that, but uh, Bretonia is hardly, uh, uh, hardly consistent. Anyway, uh, here we go. The gyro bomber is definitely going to be a target, and the slayers as well, as they are vulnerable to range fire. We're going to charge our lord, who is a paladin, directly through the first enemy units of uh, miners with blasting charges, and the reason I decided to do that was with the hope of allowing our spearmen to close the distance and prevent the miners from chucking their blasting charges like they've done here and um, well damaged fairly heavily our first unit of spearmen at arms but hey plenty of peasants will be sacrificed for this in the meantime in the background our knights have closed the distance we did hide them in the forest and popped them out to attack those two flame cannons which will achieve nothing though it looks like the knights of the realm took a few blows from those iron drakes with troll hammer torps as they were able to bring some down and it looks like the gyro bomber is here and is going to start annoying the knights as well and you got to be very wary of those look at that down to about half hp now three kills and a decent amount of hp on the gyro bomber all right and now the dwarfin main line is engaged we are dropping trebuchet hits on the enemy hammerers regardless of the fact that the trebuchets are also damaging our own peasants because that's their lot in life I'm gonna do some rear charging while the enemy is engaged, smashing those filthy Greybeards prospectors while they're engaged by even filthier peasants. Well, let's say they're about equal in level of filthiness. And not the good kind of filthiness. No so that should giggle for you. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, uh, we've also managed to engage the enemy Thunderers, which are no longer thundering away, and while we have lost one unit of spears and have taken a lot of damage to the Knights Errant due to this Gyro Bomber, look at this thing, 157 kills and 20,000 damage, and we've been focus firing it with our Peasant Bowmen uh, pretty much the entire time, but yeah, it dropped a bunch of bombs on the line of Knights and Peasants here and did a great job. The lack of armor piercing on the peasant bows means that it just takes absolute ages to bring these things down. We'd need Pegasus Knights to do it for us, not the uh, not the peasant bows. Bretonia ain't known for its uh, uh, for its range past early game either. All right, it's nearly at half HP. Try to bring it down before it does more damage. And while we start, or continue rather, working on the enemy miners and the hammerers. All right, hammerers are starting to be depleted in numbers here. Nice to see the foot squires fight them as well. I think like, thematically, maybe we'll make an army with a bunch of foot squires together with a bunch of uh, questing knights, just because they're both using those uh, two-handers. That'll look nice, if nothing else. And we'll have so much armor piercing. Alrighty, how are those hammers looking? About a half HP. Still taking a while to get them, but pretty much everything else on the field is basically done for. The Slayers are getting ripped apart as they are surrounded, and they are low enough HP and with no armor. Well, maybe not low HP, but uh, low enough armor for the peasants to uh, threaten them because they're Slayers. Uh, the Gyro Bomber is wavering, but it's come back, I believe, and will return again. And it's now just the Hammerers and the, uh, the Anime Lord left. All right, I'm really enjoying watching the hammers whack away at peasants. Yeah! 
Alright, though their armor piercing is being completely wasted on the uh, men of arms. Because they only have 35 armor, I believe, yeah. Probably could have dropped a few more trebuchet uh, hits on the enemy hammer unit, but I figured we probably shouldn't destroy the foot squires with them. And here come the arrows to help out with that. Now that we moved away the foot squires, we're gonna get a little bit of help. And, well, not a lot of armor-piercing damage. I believe the fire arrows in particular have one armor-piercing damage and, like, 14 non-armor-piercing or whatever. A little bit more on the poison arrows, but as you can see, since it took five, basically, minutes of trying to focus down that gyro bomber without knocking it out of the sky, it's just not enough armor piercing. Fortunately though, the rest of the army does manage to pull it off, the enemy lord, and does shatter together with his precious gyro bomber, and oh, it's a good master. Neat, with his uh, giant dwarven gatling gun. I actually kind of would like to see a few of these guys in action. Hmm. I don't think I had. I don't think I had these the last time I played dwarfs in SF, or at least uh, maybe hadn't uh, teched towards them. Neat. I don't know when they were added. I'd like to see these guys face off against some uh, rattling guns. But anyway, uh, we're going to chase down as best we can so that we don't have to deal with this little rebel army again. But we can do it off screen. Alrighty, very, very nice. And will that... Oh, we can ransom the captives. Yes, please, to more money. Will this destroy the army? No, that damn single unit survived. Well, that's unfortunate. We'll have to chase you down. Uh, the question will be with who and how. Hmm. So we got all these new territories and... And we uh, we're missing Kofor. Yeah, we're gonna have to attack the uh, the followers of Nagash. Oh well. Well, either way, I don't think the uh, Greybeards prospectors will uh, be able to recover an army, but we should still destroy it. Uh, how do we do this one? All right, let's do this. First of all, we'll start with probably. Well, we want to level up Martek, so maybe we'll start with the peasants duty here. Uh, we'll probably want to generate a hero, not a hero, a lord at Tel Haik until Rapunce is ready to go. So eight turns. So a temporary lord. Let's take you, Cedric, since we already have you um, paid for. Blessings of the lady be upon you. And you're going to recruit some stuff for Rapunce. Rapunce is the champion of the people, so she can have some peasant mobs. And, well, we probably won't keep it to just peasant mobs, but it'll be a while before we get the uh, better units, and, well, we can't get them here in this particular location anyway, so we can wait. It's all good. Uh, we'll want to level up Thyrus to level 3 as well, as it will make a decent amount of cash for us, which we certainly want. Alrighty, we'll probably delete this damsel as well, but in a little bit. I don't want to overspend on anything here, because there's a decent chance that the, uh, that the Tomb Kings just decide to attack us here. I wouldn't be surprised. In fact, we could maybe hold off on Heraldry of Carcassonne and the Confederation with them for one turn and instead grab the Kings of the Desert and Diplomacy to get that little bit of extra diplomatic relations with the Tomb Kings. I'm hoping that this will be sufficient to give us a couple of turns to actually prepare. We've confederated ourselves into a bit of a problem, well, let's say. Lewin, let's switch you to Channeling Stance and let's head you over to Karak Ziflin, which you should be able to attack next turn, like so. Uh, who, I think, yeah, Avril Mercier, you were heading to Kuran to do a little bit of recruitment, so head on over there, whereas the rest of you are following Lewin, and away you go. Both of you. Frankly, we could probably delete these two units of peasants, as they don't really offer much for us, and probably will provide... Well, you know what? Keep them around. Oh, actually, the pox arrows we can transfer. We'll maybe keep those. I was thinking about sending Adelard south, but at the same time, with the endgame scenario coming in 
14 turns, and we may want to send him to Leoness, or to Musiar, rather, as Lewin will have to be at Blackstone Post, and somebody will have to be at Musiar, or vice versa. Although, of course, by then we'll have the Fey Enchantress up and running. Hmm. Hard to say. Just gotta figure out what exactly we want to do with Adelard. What we don't want to do is catch the plague here. Damn you, Skaven Plague. Hmm. I don't want to stay away from you. There's also a shipwreck here, which I believe is a fight, which we may want to send Lewin to. That doesn't answer the question of Adelard. Oh, actually, well, I have you. Well, I have you, Adelard. Uh, Spearman at Arms. You are going to get a name. Let's see. Lewin's Plank Shield. Let's name a couple of them. And you, the Expendables. And the uh, Les Miserables is here as well. <laughs> oh, well, the peasant names are all going to be very amusing. And Mounted Yeoman Archers, let's get you wannabe knights. Yeah, technically this would be better on regular Mounted Yeoman, as in the ones with spears, but I'm disinclined to ever bother using them when we can just use Mounted Yeoman Archers instead, because you use them sort of like Warhounds and chase stuff down, but these guys can actually do damage with uh, with their arrows instead. There's not much purpose to building Mounted Yeoman Archers over Knights Errant, who are the weakest form of Knights, and aren't really quite Knights anyway. Uh... Anything else we want to do in terms of... Okay, well, we'll do more names next time. We're, we just don't have enough units to name uh, right now. At least not yet. Well, let's see who else needs to move other than Adelard, maybe. Oh, you know what? We should put Adelard in a... Uh, how much does that cost us per turn? Oh, wow. An extra 300 gold per turn, eh? Quite a bit. Quite a bit. And just for some channeling might not be worth our time. Mm, you know what, sit there for a turn until I figure out what exactly to do with you. And the thing is, he can't really act on his own south in the south until he gets his trebuchets and until he gets his grail reliques. Uh, his army is just too weak. As we saw, it took quite a bit of effort to bring down the uh, little rebel dwarf army here, so I would expect similar things. Anyway, uh, let's see about what we can build up here. Adelan Mountains... No, we're gonna wait on you, and public order is quite problematic everywhere as well. Ejisaro Gap, we're trading Kathik and, well, all of the elven territories, I guess. Grung Zent. We could build up the mason here if we wanted to. Though I suppose once we have Blackstone Post, we can reduce the cost of this. Though uh, an extra 10% off is also not that much. You know what, just build it now. And uh, Just build it now. Go for this and for the apothecary. And I think we'll want to build the Shrine of the Lady as well for the income adjacency bonus. Though we're probably going to replace the apothecary here actually with a... Uh, uh, you know what, delete the apothecary. Well, don't delete it, but just hold off. This will probably be replaced by a farm or something along those lines. Eh. Alright. And that looks good to me. Public order doesn't look as good to me. Also, we acquired new trade goods, which means we got new diplomacy available. Beautiful. Uh, let's pick Tolzin. I like to be friendly with them. And go for the non-aggression pact as well, and they're willing to give us 2k. Mm. Yeah, go for it. We should also probably get the military access, but we can wait on it. I'm sure they'll request that at some point themselves. Now, we still have the Golden Order available. I'm not sure Durthu would like it as much, but they're probably going to be a decent trading partner. So we should probably make friends. 41 money? Eh, yeah, just give us your 41 money, why not? Alright, anybody else? Uh, we still have non-aggression pact with Vidrioth, as well as we can sort of force a trade agreement. Beautiful. And get a little kid bit of cash. Nice, nice. And... Camry. Non-aggression pact. I wonder. Do we go for a non-aggression pact with Camry? Now, the thing with the problem with Camry is that everybody around Cetra doesn't like them. However... I'd probably rather be friendly with Cetra than with Arcan, since Arcan is holding Kofor, which should be our territory. You know, I'm going to wait on that. It should be okay, considering we're reasonably friendly with them anyway. At least I hope. 
If I miscalculate, uh, then perhaps next turn we'll get attacked by both Tomb King's factions, which uh, potentially would not be so great. But anyway. Uh, Lewin, you're at level 20. I don't think level 20 confers anything special to you, does it? At least not that I recall. Crown of Bretonia is irrelevant. Nobody heard me say that. And to you, at least at the time. I guess we could start moving through hard to hit. Yeah, your units haven't really leveled up enough to benefit from the uh, latter portion of the red line. Let's get you hard to hit. You're a little bit low on the melee defense, admittedly. Unlike so. And we'll probably... You know what? We'll level those guys up next turn when we probably attack. Actually, no probably about it when we definitely attack. All right. Skip the rest of this. Sun assign skill points. Building upgrade available. Outpost available. And one thing I don't want to skip is... And... Not ancillaries, but to use stuff. Relic sword and sword of might fuse into an armor fortune. Very nice. Obsidian uh, potion of speed and iron curse icon fuse into a helm of discord. Very nice. Uh, both very lovely pickups. Channeling staff cannot be fused with anything. I think that's all we got for now. Who has the other Henri Le Massif? Who the heck? Wait, legendary paladin. Uh, uh is that as? Huh. Wait. He's available in eight turns. Oh, we have to. Is is he? Uh, he's Rapunzel's paladin. But uh, I think we have to make sure that we have enough paladin capacity when he comes back, or I think he might disappear. And I am very wary of that. So we should be careful. Alright, let's not get any new paladins at the current time. And we'll probably give his potion of toughness to Rapunzel, but we can do that later. Either way, that's good for the items. Let's also assign them. Uh, who here wants the Helm of Discord? You have the Enchanted Shield, you have the Glittering Scales. Alright, you can have the Helm of Discord then. Uh, if I find it, there we go. Helmet of Discord will give the Talisman of Endurances to lords rather than heroes, however, as they'll need them more. Uh, you have the shield. Who do we give the... Well, I guess we can give you the armor as well. Armor of Fortune. At least until he gets the Armor of Brilliance, which we're looking to get next. All right. Looking good now. In turn. This is Bretonia. Scarbrand, are you immediately... You are immediately going to declare war on us. Uh, do we want to draw everybody into this? I don't think so. I'm not going to risk this. And the reason I'm not going to risk this is that I'm wary of somebody saying, no, I'm too weak right now and I'd rather not fight Scarbrand. Seems like a iffy idea at the current time, so don't call your allies to help. As long as Cetra doesn't declare war on us, we should be okay. Hopefully we don't lose all those southern territories. Alright, where are the Tomb Kings? It's the moment of truth for them. Or for us, I guess. Oh, I guess we already passed the Tomb Kings. Fantastic. Uh, Settlement Besieged, Volter... Volter? Vulture Mountain, Traveling Adventurers, Gotrick and Felix are up and running, Esther, Le Marshal, and Goddess something. And there's that diplomatic relations with Tomb Kings, though it's just gonna bide a little time until we destroy Arkham. You will now get destroyed. And you gotta be kidding me, the Foot Knights died of this? Well, to be fair, the uh, Gyro Bomber was fairly scary there, but it shouldn't matter all that much. Don't do what I mean. And, oh, don't tell me he... You gotta be kidding me. He survived... Ah, oh, I should have just done it manually. Game. <laughs> oh, you... Greybeards prospectors, damn you. And I say that as a curse. Okay, well... Ah! Would you look at that? Here comes Scarbrand. I fear we won't be able to hold Fyrus. We might be able to hold El Haik. Okay, you know what? Here's what we'll do. Uh, Beast Slayers of Bastun and Holy Wardens of La Maison Tal. You're going to get summoned. Uh, that's all we can do for now. Uh, I don't want any of these elven units. At least not at the current time. Then we'll need archers. I'm going to go with poison. For the wow, man, they're expensive. These are expensive, damn. Ah, <laughs> uh, hmm. I mean, we could get some mounted yeoman archers, but I fear that the doggos will simply chase them down and destroy them, and I'm not paying 4k to get knights errant here. 
All right, two more peasant mobs and no, we should we should get poison archers. All right, there you go. They don't do as much damage, but the poison is quite nice. Or do we just split two and two? Although, hmm. We'll need mobs of peasants to drown the enemy bloodletters in. And, oh, he's got two armies. And he's going to try to bypass Sartosa, who he is at war with. Interesting. All right, we need Raponce back as soon as possible. All right, go for fire arrows. Screw it. And uh, two and two, despite the um, insanity of the cost. All righty, Lewin. While all that is happening, what the heck do we have here? Warg. With plenty of trolls of various kinds. Damn, we have to destroy this rogue army. We can't trust rogue armies. Quite annoying as they are. Uh, you're going to go into regular stance. We're going to attack you. Most likely you will head across the river and then loop around like this, losing us our uh, our movement range. But, well, hardly surprising. All right, attack and declare war. And don't bother asking Carcassonne for help. We'll be fine. Alrighty, I would normally be tempted to water resolve this, but I mean, there's a giant. Is this minor little tiny battle worth a fight when we have Kemmler's fight right there? Although if the auto resolve hurts us too much, hmm. Oh, and you know what? Hmm. I guess I'll die so easily. But it's such a giant pile of trolls. Hmm. Alright, Squirrel, let's fight it, just for fun. I am king here! Alrighty, well, tell that to the trolls, Lewin, we know all about it. Anyway, here we go, I do think this is going to be a, uh, well... A very, very short battle, as it's just a pile of trolls, but, I mean, nine units of trolls, a war bus, and a giant seems like it's fun enough to be worthy of a fight. Plus, it feels lorefully accurate. The knights hunting down the monsters that roam the land. Typically, it would be greenskins, lore-wise, but, well, you know, they do have, uh, uh, they do have trolls among them, oftentimes, and it's a greenskin war boss as well. Not like we're gonna get Throg out here. Alrighty, well, we're gonna start off by engaging the enemy giant and the enemy war boss as best we can. The enemies are going to try to go for Lewin and the paladins while the knights charge on. And it's so odd to see them stop in their tracks as obviously they do not have the mass to push through the trolls, but that's okay because they do have the damage. And charge into the chaos trolls brings them down to nearly half HP over here. And these ones are doing a little bit better while the biggest blob of enemies are surrounding the giant and the enemy war boss. Not to worry, we can simply envelop our foes while the great weapons and the lances of our knights swing away and grind those trolls down. Alright, looks like the enemy flanks are about to collapse. The trolls are surrounded and judging by their low leadership, they ain't sticking around. So we'll use the knights errant to chase them down while we work on the rest of them. The giant right in the middle of this but is actually being focused down by the paladins and we can see it's already lost two thirds of its HP. And Lowen's trying to get in on the action as well. You gotta love how, uh, how Beaky and Lewin both tower over combat including that of the trolls. And I do believe that the battle is pretty much ours. The enemy lord is in there, but he's going to waver, shatter, and give it up. <laughs> All right, I did say it would be a very, a very short battle, so if we have time, maybe we'll get a uh, another one going, a proper one, a one with all of those uh, forces of Kemmler. Anyway. All right, easy enough. Uh, we can pardon the captives for a decent amount of cash, sure. Ugh. So, hmm. 
All oh, right, there was a comment saying that if you ransom captives too much, you could get the you could get a negative trait called and the comment said kidnapper or something along those lines. I don't know what the trait does though. Do we risk doing this? I mean, we've been doing this for a while and I Oh wait, we got the negative sacking trait, but we don't have a negative Damn, 3k is tempting. All right, you know what? Maybe we shouldn't risk it. It'll just execute the cap. At least it'll give us a little bit of extra charge bonus. And the other reason I was considering this was this, the campaign movement range bonus. Uh, you know what I should have done? I should have had uh, one of the follower armies rack up the negative trait and Lewin reinforce. But I guess he does need the levels as well. Anyway, uh, the campaign movement range will hopefully still allow us to reach... Uh, Hey, look, Savior. <laughs> Everybody else is having an easy time getting that one. Uh, still allow us to reach... Hey, a Forbidden Rod. Very nice. Uh, still allow us to reach Karak Zipplin. Man. Finally. Able to say that. And Tollkeeper ranked up below rank 10. Huh, first time I got one of these. Uh, we can immediately put the Tollkeeper on you, Avril Mercier. Uh, you are going to make us a decent amount of cash after all. Then we will send you to... Is there anything here that reduces recruitment costs? I don't think so. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. Alright, looks like you'll have to wait until next turn. Alright, alright, go to, go to Longi. I'm actually curious. Once you enter Kuran, marches, we're at 1123. This bumps up to... 1332. All right, so nothing crazy, but it essentially allows her to pay for herself all the while, all the while giving us a research rate, and it'll increase as we go as well. So yeah, it'll worth our time. Uh, here we can increase our local recruitment capacity, but not increase the levels. So I think we'll ignore it. Oh, two more turns until we can upgrade Kuran. That's nice as well. That's very nice, in fact. All right. Lewin will deal with you in a second, buddy. We don't want to pick a tech yet because we want to try to get another student or many. Uh, you, Camille. You are a damsel of the heavens. Can we recruit another damsel here? No. Can we recruit another damsel here? Yes, we can. I guess the question is... Wait, do you have... Hmm. I'm wondering whether we should recruit a damsel of any particular kind. Well, for a peasant army, we're probably better off using a damsel of the beasts, though on the other hand, that'll be at a lower level. Also, you should have a vow. Uh, pledge to chivalry, please. And also, you should have a vow. Pledge to also get lowborn militia. Oh. Actually, we won't be using you for this. You're only here temporarily. Hmm. Man, I can't believe pledge to protect it doesn't have... Wait, pledge to campaign? Win a siege battle? Um, uh, maybe... Win a siege battle in a desert or jungle climate region. That's certainly possible. Pledge the campaign. Although if an island is nearby, that would have still been the easier pick. Uh, you know what? Camille, go over here for now. We'll put you into Cedric's army if, in fact, Scarbrand attacks it. I fear that Scarbrand will send both of his armies to take Fyrus, which there's nothing we can do about. Uh, but Al Haik, because it has walls, is much more liable to be defensible. Uh, we can... Let me just see here. Four turns? Yeah, no, that's not happening. We can also summon the Green Knight if uh, Scarbrand attacks at Al Haik. Too bad Raponce will not be there at that time. Alrighty, let's move everybody else along. Uh, Lewin, you're about to attack this, so... We're going to send Chantal right here. I go and Eleanor, you're going to be right here as well. And let's put you into the lady wills it. channeling. And I guess we'll put Lewin into channeling as well. My my is yours. And... Are we ready to go? Kemler, let's see what you got. Not bad. Oh, this is going to be like three full stacks it's gonna be a lot of undead the problem will be the ghosty boys and the cairn rates we lack a significant amount of magical damage we really need to hopefully find a lich bone pennant to help out in that regard but alas we do not have one yet hmm. How quickly? Nah, I was wondering if we could reach the uh, uh, the coast of Araby with Adelar, but that ain't happening. That's for sure. All right, let's complete whatever admin we need to complete. Not there. 
because Scarbrand, and Massive Forkel. I mean, I guess we could still keep upgrading the brothel slash tavern. Why not? And... And just start building the Grail Chapel, and then you can switch to the Peasant's Duty. Ajisaro Gap. You are being sold, you are being sold. Forest of Shalon. Ah, yes, yeah, so you are not being sold. Let's get you those grazing pastures. And while Adelard is there, you get... Okay, now don't bother collecting 22 money. Never mind. <laughs> I don't know why I bothered with that. And the wasteland, you're fine as you are, because we'll need the cash to upgrade Kurun and everything in it. All right. Lovely. Now, let's level everybody up and let's head for one more battle. You are going to get hard to hit. You're going to be right in the middle of the fray for this entire battle after all, Lewin. Matthias, the follower. Mm, Scarred Vet, Woundmaker, Deadly Blade. Hero Bretonia, upkeep production for lords and heroes, eh? 8%. Well, considering, well, Lewin is free, but... Eh, that might not be too bad. Or we could just make you even tank here. I mean, we'll get this eventually. Ask her, just make you tank here for now. Tank here and kill here. Yeah, blessing of the lady. And that feels lorefully appropriate as well, as well. Uh, Deadly Onslaught for you, and blessing of the lady for you, and damsel... Life Bloom, Earthblood. Oh, we spam Earthblood a lot. Shield of Thorns will be quite useful potentially as well due to the melee damage reflection, but because we have basically no mana, we're not going to be casting anything other than Earthblood, as in we won't have the uh, mana for it right now, so we're not going to pick anything other than that. You, my friend, are going to get Blade Master, hard to hit, deadly blade, Foe Seeker. And you'll soon be able to get Blinding Majesty and all of that, but uh, we'll wait on that and get your Blade Shield first, since you're not going to be as tanky as the others. And I believe that's it. Let's get to it. Battle number three. You are at war with Vidrioth and Torgavon. Which one of them is stronger? Looks like Torgavon is slightly stronger, and we have no trade agreement with them. Let's see. Let's see if they're willing. Torgavon. Join war against the Barrow Legion. Six point out, damn, yeah, that's not gonna happen. Oh well, at least give us some money then. 532? Let's try Vidrioth. I don't think either one is gonna be willing, but give it a try. 545, okay, well, that's, that, that makes no difference. Propose offer. What the heck? <laughs> Look at. <laughs> what the heck is up with Kemmler's portrait? Oh, it reminds me of Wide Thorgrim, but. Uh... <laughs> It looks squished here. Anyway, propose offer. By all means. Alright, well, we just have time for one more battle. I was about to say quick battle, but I don't think this one's gonna be quick, but that's not a bad thing. Away we go. Alrighty, Pyrrhic victory. That's what I like to see. A look at all of this. Yeah, that's going to be about three full stacks with one, two, three, four, five, six lords and heroes. And on top of that, a decent amount of enemy cav and stuff. Yeah. And of course, uh, Corel is uh, quite the issue to deal with. All right. This may be the best battle of the campaign so far. Well, let's get to it. Alrighty, the lady does will it. We have to return the dead to their graves, and plenty of dead will have to be returned as we've got about three full stacks worth. This is exciting times, and I'm hoping for a great battle. Here comes some more of that uh, charging through the ranks of the dead that we've seen throughout the uh, <laughs> throughout the beginning of the campaign. Ah, oh, you gotta love those glorious cavalry recharges though <laughs> uh, it's gonna be a long time before I get tired of seeing this even as it is unfortunate to see my favorite vampire counts uh, be the uh, uh, be the target of these cavalry charges uh, but ha uh, I uh, I still prefer hex wraiths to anything the uh, and blood knights uh, to anything the Bretonians got going for them even if uh, Grail Knights are uh, superior generally in this game. 
Well, actually, I don't remember if uh, they are in SFO or not. But they should be. In theory. Mostly due to the weakness to the... Uh, uh, to the holy stuff that vampires have. But anyway, I'm talking about the loreful aspect of it. Uh, this first army is just the beginning, an opening skirmish for our knights to rip apart. Um, but the main enemy force with most of the enemies is going to actually come down this valley, which is going to be interesting. I... huh. When I originally saw this, I wasn't exactly sure how I wanted to tackle this particular situation, so a pile of knights moving down a valley like this doesn't seem like the greatest of ideas, because they will have absolutely no room whatsoever to maneuver. If we had a lot of high mana and a lot of highly leveled mages, we could have probably allowed them to close or to start moving in and just dropped a bunch of spells on the piles of enemies. And that said, we don't have that option, so we're going to have to kill them the old-fashioned way. Hmm. And we'll see if that works out for us. And we're gonna let them move a little bit closer while we take positions. And the positions I speak of is we're gonna take our four units of archers or bowmen and put them up on this hill where they can fire on the enemy here. And as soon as the enemy leaves the choke point, we're going to start hitting them with all of these knights. And I was hoping that the enemy would come out with some of its flyers, which is why I moved Lewin and the uh, and our own flyers in. And now oh, they're there. Uh, <laughs> I was waiting for that. Obviously, we don't want our guys dropping down into that blob. Well, actually, the thing is, we very well could drop them down into that blob because the paladins and Lewin probably wouldn't get killed by it, but I'd rather the giant pile of dead actually march towards the... Uh, uh, well, towards their knightly doom. And this is a glorious sight to see. Ah, oh, I love the vampire counts. Look at this gloriousness. <laughs> ah, oh well. Now the bats are dropping out of the sky on this massive pile of dead. And there's Kemmler. Uh, marches forth slowly and but surely. And damn, there's a lot of them. Well, that'll be uh, plenty of things for the knights to kill. Anyway, it looks like the enemy bats have been ripped apart, which means... What the heck? Uh... Never mind. Oh yeah. For a second I thought I saw one of the Pegasus Knights land and then I was like gone and then I saw it again. Why the heck did you land? What, what is wrong with you? <laughs> you were only told to attack that, but anyway. Uh, while that's done, or that's, uh, well, those uh, uh, Pegasus Knights are getting away, we're going to go and attack some of these spirit hosts. As nobody else has magical damage, we need to knock them out. And before they, uh, and before they get to the knights, and granted the knights charge, etc, etc, would have uh, killed them over time, but why waste the charge on spirit hosts with their 75% physical resistance, when we can simply kill them off with our paladins. And looks like they're beginning to crumble away, resistance aside, and... Well, we're not going to let them heal up. Here come some Black Knights and some Dire Doggos, however, moving up to where our Foot Knights are waiting and protecting our piles of peasants. Well, I mean not piles, but our four units of, uh, of peasant bowmen. And of course, this is still just the opening skirmish of this. Black Knights charging in towards our Knights Errant Footmen. Um, but Beaky and the Paladins are right on their heels and are going to start ripping them apart as well. Perhaps they should have focused on the uh, much deadlier target behind them. Alrighty, and the enemy is drawing closer and closer. Look at our gloriously arrayed pile of cavalry waiting to charge down into the masses of the dead. Can't wait to see the charge, just allow them to get a little bit closer. Another unit of Black Knights is going to charge in as well. But once again, with the paladins here and the arrows raining down upon them, this is probably not going to work in their favor. Plus, they're getting poisoned all at the same time. And there it is, finally, the time has come for the main line to charge. 
Too bad the sun isn't at our back. That would have been that would have been fantastic. But at least we get a little bit. Anyway, down we go through those uh, Karen race. Though it looks like they will at least do a little bit and stop a few of our humans in our tracks. Let's see how deep we can go. Slanashi giggle into this pile of grave guard skeletons and zombies. <laughs> Oh, uh, this is a very dangerous thing to do, as obviously at least some of the knights will get trapped, and there's no way this charge will kill enough of the enemy, especially as they've got so, so many more where that came from. Ever since Total Warhammer 1, I've been preaching the fact that vampire counts should have a WA-like mechanic, where they get a bunch of extra zombies and skeleton warriors as part of their armies, because fighting the dead should look like this, shouldn't it? You should always be against just ridiculous hordes of zombies and skeletons and relatively few elites, which is technically the way that the vampire counts are supposed to function, but there's just never enough zombies on the field, at least for my taste. This uh, this particular battle, however, and does put a smile on my face. Anyway, uh, back to it. The knights are stuck in. We obviously popped our uh, line of Britonia buff to get that melee damage reflection, and just as it's about to run out, we're going to back off. Uh, we've done a decent amount of damage. We can see that uh, at least some of the enemy units are beginning to crumble away. And we're going to peel away and reform and charge again. The Foot Knights are also doing their job. They've managed to hold off up here. And Lewin and the uh, Lewin and the Paladins have actually been going after Krell while in the middle of that massive formation. Unlike the first time that uh, Lewin faced off against Krell, where Krell nearly ripped him apart, now Krell is very much no longer a threat to him. At least not in his current uh, in his current form. It's been a pretty big difference. So he's gonna go down then we'll go after the vampires and the other lords and continue to charge through the enemy ranks okay careful there peasants don't don't shoot the knights there and I'm trying to shoot the uh, vampire who's sort of leaping around or ripping foot knights apart nice animations there though all right, and here come those jauntily marching skeletons, as somebody uh, pointed out in the comments, uh, to join the fray against the Foot Knights. And it's time for Charge the Second. We were able to back off most of the knights. A few did get stuck, but, well, that's about as expected. And let's see it one more time. Look at all that cavalry. Oh, this is my favorite battle so far. This is absolutely glorious. There go the Knights of the Lion Hearted, or the Lewin's Lions, and damn, a lot of Black Knights, and... <laughs> oh, look at them all go flying. Um, but yeah, it looks like the enemy has enough mass to actually stop our charge here, which is once again appropriate. Um, but it looks like they're going to continue taking heavy damage, and the balance of power is now in our favor. Uh, the Knights of the Azure Sky are also waiting in the wings as they like to do. They did just knock a unit of Vargeists out of the sky, and they're still relatively okay. They haven't lost a single unit, so great job to them. All right, and is Krell still alive in there somewhere? Yeah, he seems to have gotten knocked into the middle of the enemy blob. Well, good for him. He's not going to be alive for long, though. I actually love the color scheme of the uh, uh, of the Barrow Legion as well. Looks quite nice. Alrighty, and we can see plenty of those enemy dead are beginning to crumble away. Lewin has found that enemy vampire, and by the looks of it, uh, the vampire is done for. Kemmler is still alive, but it looks like our knights are starting to carry the day. We can get a little bit of a... Uh, oh, Krell is still alive? Really? Damn. Well, not surprising, perhaps. It is Krell, after all. And that second charge, effective though it was, will allow us to back off once again, regroup once again, and charge. The way that we keep charging them allows us to continue knocking them back down the hillside, back down into the valley, and not spread out, which is also kind of interesting. It's a very interesting battle. I don't remember fighting a battle quite like it, and I've played a lot of battles in my day. 
Alrighty, and the enemy continues trying to make their way up the hill to fight our foot knights, and here come the cavalry once more. I think third time shall be the charm as we charge the ranks of the dead and hopefully, finally, clean house. Here we go. <laughs> I'll never get tired of this. Absolutely glorious. Man, I gotta save this battle somehow. Oh, well, I guess I did save the replay. <laughs> and just to be able to play it again at some point, it's just too entertaining. Alrighty, and there we go. Now it looks like the balance of power is very much in our favor at about 70%. Uh, Heinrich Kemmler is down to about half HP. There is another Vampire Lord in there, but Lewin is looking to focus him down. And the Knights are now beginning to, if not outnumber the dead, at least envelop their army and start hitting them from every side. Most of the dead, down goes a Krator, most of the dead beginning to crumble away as we can see the yeah, the effect on them, and I think the battle will be ours shortly. And just a matter of killing all these units in the center here. Once again, if we had a little bit more in the way of magics, this would have been a little bit easier, as we would have been able to destroy more units while they were blobbed up. But honestly, I think I prefer to I prefer it this way without the magics. Considering I'm doing kind of the uh, uh, kind of the same thing in my little Eltharian melee only melee campaign as in not using damaging magic. It's certainly something I've gotten a little bit used to now, so I don't really mind it here either. Alrighty, and those black knights are now crumbling away, lance to lance, but it looks like ours will carry the day. The balance of power shifts 100% to our favor. The last of the enemy vampire lords begins to crumble, and somewhere in the pile of knights and graveguard, Kemmler goes down as well. Fantastic. All right, down go the last of the uh, the Cryptor's beakies, just having some fun rushing around, and there it is. And I believe with that, the Barrow Legion are destroyed, as I doubt that they will recover enough to do anything else. That was pretty much all their eggs in one basket. And why are there a few skeleton spears alive? Well, either way, we'll wait for them to crumble away, and we'll see what the damage was. Alrighty, well that certainly worked out pretty darn interestingly. I was uh, first thinking that the... Uh, wow, 12,000 XP, nice. Uh, I was first thinking that the choke point would actually be a bad thing for us, because obviously we wouldn't be able to maneuver, but at the same time it seemed like we were able to charge in and then charge out. I think despite having thousands of hours in uh, a total Warhammer. I don't recall ever utilizing a choke point or doing a choke point battle with an all cavalry army before, so that was uh, that was real interesting. Uh, I guess once again we're just going to go ahead and execute those captives. Yeah, and do that. Of course they will remain alive in decent numbers, but not so decent I think that we can't destroy them. Also, what was the Lich Killer trait? I don't remember. Let's double check it. And Gilded Cuirass, I'm sorry, did you just say regeneration? Oh my. Uh, well, obviously you're not keeping that, but uh, I didn't think that, huh. Okay, so this is regular regeneration. And a Banner of Eternal Flame, damn. We're getting good rewards of Valet as well. Uh, no students, sadly, but still, can't complain at all. Uh, I wanted to check this. Does Lewin's regeneration, is it of the regeneration type, or is it a different type of regeneration? Uh, where is it? Here it is, the Lady's Champion. No, it is a different type of regeneration, which means it can stack with regular types of regeneration. Which means we could give him the Gilded Cuirass and, well, lose a little bit of resistance. Actually, quite a bit of resistance, but gain more regeneration. 
Though to be fair, at the current time, it doesn't seem that he's needed it. Mm, but uh, this is a very nice item pickup nonetheless. Hmm. Alright, you can lose that, and frankly, we'll give the Forbidden Rod to somebody else. And you have no items. Okay, so what we want to do is this. Kemmler has revived himself. We... let's see, Lich Killer, where is it? Spell resistance and enemies with magic powers. Are, all right, it's decent. I don't think either one of you are going to be armies, though. You're magnanimous and you are diplomatic. Honestly, I should have been using two magnanimous ones, but uh, either way, neither of them needs to get Lich Killer. It's not going to serve them as they will just be sitting in settlements. Therefore, we're free to destroy this. That said, we can still use one of you to do it instead. Let's say you, because you're a lower level, and I'd like you to get to level 10 ASAP. Do this. We can auto-resolve this, hopefully. Like so. Let's hope that isn't an insane amount of damage, and uh, it's more damage than the actual battle was, but you know what, not surprising. Uh, we're not going to sack it, we'll occupy it for ourselves. There's that Lich Killer trait, and a free Wanda Jet for you. A Zealot, a Servant, hey, there's the student that we were looking for. And another student, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. In fact, you can have a student while you're out. Oh, they only go to heroes, all right. All of you get students, students for you. And students for you. There we go. And then, Lewin, you can kill off this guy as well. If I can reach you. Right here. And I think you won't be able to be in range. Damn, I was hoping to get you to rank 11. Or rank 10, rather. Why did I say 11? Attack. Lewin. And... Ah, they did reach. Fantastic. I'll resolve this. Probably though you won't be much in the way of XP. But nonetheless... Execute captives. And a hedge wizard, another giant plate. Damn, this has been a lucrative episode in terms of items and uh, pickups. And Lewin, you can in fact reach Blackstone Post. What do we have in terms of defenses? Honestly, compared to that, not worth fighting. We'll move in. And we'll auto resolve it in a second, destroying Kemmler's faction for good. Once we move you into March Stance to leech the XP. Maybe I should have used Adelard to leech all this XP after all. Oh, too late. Alright, auto resolve this. We'll be fighting plenty, plenty more ghosties as we go through the rest of the uh, as there, we go through the rest of the campaign, as the Barrel Legion will return in 13 turns. Seek the trying to favor. think of a turns, return, some kind of joke, ah, whatever. <laughs> a brain no worky today. Anyway, with that, we're obviously out of time. Had three battles this episode after all, and a heck of a fight for Kemmler's last stand. Uh, the Blackstone Post will need to be fortified against the uh, re-incursion of all those enemies, and we'll deal with that next time. Speaking of next time, we will be going ahead and trying to defend against Scarbrand with Cedric Le Cornet, and whether we can manage to pull that off against two full stacks really remains to be seen. Fortunately, it was the Confederation that was important, so we do have Raponce, and that's a good thing. If we could maybe even... Hmm. Out of curiosity... 34? Okay, that's not happening. Uh, <laughs> I was hoping to try to get them to fight Scarbrand. What about you? 5.8? 6k. Hmm, try to get him to fight Scarbrand and then attack him right after. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, Scarbrand will ignore him in favor of going for us. I don't know, I'll think about it. I will think about it either way. More Bretonia slash Luwin it comes, so stay tuned. Don't forget to leave a like and comment. All glory to the algorithm. And thanks for watching.